So um, real quick, let me just give you a quick introduction. Uh, I don't have a ton of time, and this isn't a super complex talk. This is supposed to really be kind of a high-level overview of um, tra open tracing and metrics. So I'm an open source engineer at Lightstep. We're a, um, a, a tracer. So we're a SAS tracer. We let you, uh, if you have open tracing instrumentation, you can send those to us and we will show them for you, which is really cool. So you can find me on Twitter at Austin L. Parker. And that's me. And this is you trying to figure out why your services don't work. You know, this is you getting page at three in the morning when you've got, you know, after the, the great migration of microservices has happened and now you've got 10,000 services uh, throwing, you know, intermittent errors instead of just three. And what we say is like, oh, tracing fixes this, right? Tracing fixes this, this conspiracy theory of what happened, when did it happen, how did it happen? But when you think about it, tracing has kind of, you know, been around for a while. Tracing is kind of a core component of a lot of systems, right? So you can, there's kernel level tracing. It's, it's really traditionally a developer thing. And you think of metrics and monitoring and you think, oh, that's more of an ops thing. So now you, you've gone in, you've traced all your microservices, and now you kind of have this, this multitude of problems where before, you had someone looking at some metrics like, you know, what's the rate of successful versus failed requests? How long are these mutexes being held? How long are these queries taken? And then you've got your tracing over here, which is saying like, oh, I can see, you know, request comes in, goes down, and goes through kind of all these, these different parts of the trace. And now I've had to kind of maybe doubly instrument my application code, right? So instead of having your know, one thing that's reporting to a stats D endpoint, I've got one thing reporting to that the endpoint, another thing reporting to my open tracing tracer, um, maybe another thing for, you know, whatever other random reason. And it's, there's a couple of other problems beyond all that. You know, tracing is hard to kind of get buy-in for sometimes because you don't want to get locked into a vendor. Uh, you don't, you know, I, I come from the .NET world primarily where it's like, uh, congratulations, you use Microsoft Stack for everything, which is great until you want to stop using the Microsoft Stack at any point of this, and now you're screwed. There's a problem, especially on larger teams, of having inconsistent API and handoff problems. So how do I go from service A to service B if we're both using different incompatible tracers or perhaps different versions of the same tracer? I mean, this is a problem even with open tracing if you, you know, aren't maintaining a stable version across your, your fleet in some cases. So open tracing fixes some of these problems, fixes a lot of these problems because open tracing says, well, here's a pretty lightweight API that is vendor neutral that I can roll out across everything. And then if team A wants to use one tracer, team B wants to use a different tracer, that's fine. If we want to replace the tracers, that's also fine. And it really importantly here, open tracing separates what you choose to instrument from what you choose to collect. So I can instrument my code however I want. I don't have to collect everything I instrument. And it, more importantly than that, I don't have to collect the same things, or I don't have to collect different things in the same way. It doesn't enforce a single style of kind of exfiltrating data from my application, from my microservices to somewhere else. Uh, who, know, who knows, I feel like this thing keeps cutting out. Am I crazy? Um, who knows tracing at all? Show of hands. Eh, pretty good. So this might be a review for some of you, but you've got spans, you've got logs, you've got your span context. Your span context is how you propagate a span or a span relationship across some sort of process uh, or network boundary. And then you've got tracers, which record information that are admitted to the API. So a tracer is going to be your Jaeger, your Zipkin, uh, your Lightstep, um, Datadog, supports open tracing. And Rather than creating separate instrumentation for all of your different things you want out with open tracing, by using those spans, by using baggage to kind of put 
not random, but put things in there that you might care about looking at later down the line, you're able to take this single stream of uh, stuff and you're able to pick out different things. So you can get events out, you can get traces out. You can also get like counters or gauges out, right? The API itself gives you sort of these building blocks that you can use to create metrics at the uh, later than you, you know, later than you might think, right? So at the point that you're going through and you're shipping stuff off to a tracer, you could also say, well, hey, here's everything with an operation name. Every span has to have an oper associated operation name. I can pull that out and I can use that to correlate events. I can use that to correlate metrics. I can use a span duration. So I can use, hey, how long did it take to, I have instrumentation around uh, this particular SQL query. I can use that duration and then report it out to Prometheus or something by modifying my tracer itself, not by modifying my instrumentation. Same thing with logged errors. So a really common pattern in tracing is that you have a try catch, you know, finally. And then if you catch, you emit an error event back into your span. So at the point that your spans are being processed and shipped off to your tracer, you can have another thing that says, oh, I see an error there. I'm going to throw that over to my Prometheus endpoint or whatever as an error event, and then I'm going to count that as a metric. Finally, uh, and I mentioned this before, baggage items. So really, baggage is just kind of an arbitrary KV. Um, ultimately, it's a text map. You can put whatever you want in there, and it'll propagate down the chain. So you can create counters or gauges or really anything you want early on in the life cycle of a trace, and then add to it, let it, you know, do whatever in terms of adding extra timings, adding more data to it, and then at the end, when the trace finishes, it can get shipped off to your, whatever your metrics platform is. There's some other stuff that we're doing in open tracing itself that will really help all this. So one is a concept of a tracer observer as a first class thing in open tracing. The idea behind the tracer observer basically being that you could create middleware that plugs into a tracer. Think of it this way. Right now, you would have to kind of modify a tracer client itself in order to, a client library, in order to sort of pull these events off and ship them off somewhere. With the tracer observers, you'd be able to write, you know, sidecars or extensions or whatever that could just basically look at everything going through the tracer and then make decisions based on that. The first part of tracer observer, which is what we're calling trace identifiers, um, this is exposing a way to get the span and trace ID out of a span context. That is in RFC, and it's actually kind of working its way through implementation into, I believe, the Java library right now, but we're working on getting it everywhere. So if you're interested in either of those, you can see the uh, issues here. Uh, the other thing, and maybe more pie in the sky, is it would be cool to have like a metrics format just as part of open tracing. You know, I know Open Census does some of this, but it would be neat if there was like a, hey, you can, here's a lightweight metrics format in the same way that Open Tracing says, here's a lightweight span format, and you could swap that out under the hood. One last thing is Lightstep is holding a Observability Practitioner Summit at KubeCon Seattle. So if you're planning on being at KubeCon, you can sign up for this. It's a one-day workshop on the 10th. Uh, we're also looking for papers. Um, so if you have kind of any real world experience in observability, so that could be metrics, monitoring, tracing, whatever, uh, you want to come talk about it, please feel free. In fact, I, I heartily encourage you to submit a paper. It's bit.ly slash observability dash summit dash CFP. Uh, and if you have any more questions about that specifically, you know, come find me afterwards and we can talk about it for a minute. But we would really, we're really excited to have people that have kind of been in the weeds on some of this and want to share what they've learned and talk to other people that have been in the weeds on this so that we can all sort of like, you know, sit down and nerd out about tracing and metrics and stuff like that. So that's my talk. I hope you enjoyed it.